Hi everyone, in this video I'll show you how to work with functions within Python. First we'll go through the built-in functions in Python, then we'll access some functions through different packages, and finally we'll create our own functions. Let's define what a function is. A function is a block of code that is run only when it is called. Functions are first class objects, meaning they are created at runtime, can be used within an argument, and can be used as a variable or in a data structure. Within Python, a function requires a name and a body. Input parameters are usually included for functions, but are not required. Functions can be used to abstract away the underlying process, either for security reasons or to simplify the process for the function's users. Great, let's get started with looking at built-in functions. So here I have a table of all the built-in functions within Python. Some of these may you may have worked with before. A very common one is len, which couldn't be the length of a certain object. Print, if you want to print anything out. Sum, if you want to add anything up. And a lot of these other ones are also very familiar to us. So let's actually take a look at a really common one, print. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to type out print and I'm just going to run this. And right here we can see that it's a function. And that that's a very quick way to see if something's a function. If I put parentheses around it then it won't return that. It will actually run the function itself. So let's go through a very simple function first. So I'm going to first create a number list and I'll do this with list comprehension. Call range which is a class. And now I'm just going to use a very common function just to illustrate it to everybody that's a beginner. So I'll just use max and min. Great, let's run this. And just to explain what's going on, so I created the number list with this list comprehension. Then I called these functions max and min, which are built in Python functions to find the largest value within numlist and then the smallest value within numlist. And we can just check that by printing out all of the values and we can see zero, that's the smallest number and 24 is the largest. Okay, so that's a very simple example of the built-in functions and I highly recommend that everybody take a look at these and play around with these. These built-in functions are probably faster than anything that you can create yourself so it's very helpful to know these and utilize these in order for you to write your code the most efficiently you can. Okay, let's next take a look at functions from packages. And I imported a few here just to explain. So we're going to be working with NumPy, SciPy, and the math packages. Right now, I'll highlight two functions, so square root and factorial. Many of you may be familiar with square root. So if I just call square root and run this, we'll see it's a function. So this is a fun function from the math package. And it's very simple to execute this function. So we can do square root nine. And that returns the square root of nine, which is three. And if you ever want any help 
on a certain function, you can just run help. which itself is a function also. So help is a function that helps you understand other functions. So it explains what the square root function does. Great, let's look at the factorial function. So again, this is a function and what it does is it multiplies everything to the nth. So if I do four, it'll give us 24. And what factorial is doing is it multiplies it by four times, three times, two times, one. And similarly, if you want help understanding it, you can just call factorial and it explains what this does. Great, so let's get into creating our own functions and it can be relatively simple to create some of the functions. So let's take a look at the math function for square root again. So sqrt. Let's try to put in a negative number. So if I put in negative 9, I get an error. And the square root function from the math package can't handle it. So what we can do is we can create our own function that can handle this. So the way that we initiate a function is with def so def which defines the function and next you need to name your function so i'm going to call this sqroot because i don't want to overwrite the sqrt function so this is going to be the name of my function the next thing i need to do is i need to put parentheses and you can see that this is changed to a dark tan color and that shows that that's the, we are initiating this function here, square root. So it does take an input and we can put in X. So X is going, it's going to take only one input and it's gonna be X, which is any number I pass into this. Then we need to put in a colon and hit enter. And you'll see that it's indented. So that's on purpose. The code block right here is going to be what we're going to return and you don't want to get rid of this indent you need this in order to create your function so this is just a one line function so i'm going to return and this is going to return the one line code block i'm going to write currently so the way that we can take the square root is x raise it to the one half and that will give us the square root. Great. So we can check that we wrote this correctly and this should be exact. This should give us the exact same values for any integers or positive real numbers that we put into this. So for I in range, I'm just going to go up to nine. And I'm going to pass in both the square root function. I'm going to run this for i. And I want to check that it's the same as the sqrt function for math. Let's run this. Great, so looks like we programmed the square root function correctly. Now let's try to see if the square root function works correctly if I give it a negative number. So what this should do is it should return a complex number if I correctly input this. Great, so a cool thing about Python is that we can work with complex numbers and this is very important if you work in physics or anything with electrical engineering where complex numbers are very common. Okay, so maybe I need this for a certain reason and I need to get the degrees of this, of the square root of negative nine. So I'm going to call the NP for numpy dot angle. I'm going to input our function square root of negative nine and I want to get this in degrees. So I'm gonna put that as true. Let's run that. 
Great, so the square root of negative 9 gives us 90 degrees. So maybe we need have some physics problem or some electrical engineering problem where we need to get the degrees for the for a negative number, the square root of a negative number. Okay, great. Next, let's create a function without any parameters. So we can do that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, going to create a approximation of pi. So this isn't exactly pi to, I believe this is to the eighth or ninth number. And you can read about this on Wolfram's Math World page. And this approximation, we're going to, like we did before, define the function. And then I'm going to call this pi approx. So it's an approximation. And I'm going to leave this blank. So previously we put in an x for our square root function. For our pi approximation, I'm just going to re leave this blank and we'll see what this does once I run it. And pi can be roughly approximated to a certain amount of decimal places by taking 2143, dividing it by 22, and raising it to the 1 fourth. Okay, I'm going to put a line of code right under this. Let's run. And let's return pi approx just with empty parentheses and run this. Whoops, I made a mistake somewhere. Oh, that's right, I didn't put parentheses around here. Great, so we have a rough approximation of what pi is here. And if I go down, I also loaded in pi from math and we could just eyeball the difference between the two. Great, looks like it. it's different to the ninth decimal place, so it's accurate eight to eight decimal places out. So depending on what you're doing, this approximation can be good enough if you just need to calculate something very, very quickly. Okay, so what we can do next is we can actually apply this. So let's say that I want to calculate the volume of a sphere and I want to put this into a function. So what I'll do is I'll create another function. I'll define this as, and what I'll call it is vol sphere. And it takes in the radius and it's going to return and this is the formula to get the volume of a sphere. And we're going to multiply this by our pi approximation. We need to put in our parentheses. And then we need to multiply this by the radius raised to the third. Okay, so we created our function. And so now we want to answer this question. What is the volume of a sphere with radius of five centimeters? So what we can do is we can call the vol sphere, put in five, and we'll get our answer. So 523 centimeters to the third is our answer. And that's the volume for this sphere. Great. So finally, we can create a function within a function. And it, it's a pretty neat thing and it can be pretty simple. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a analytic continuation of the fan factorial. So what th for anybody that's, that's familiar with factorial, like I mentioned before, it multiplies each integer by the previous one. So four times three times two times one, if you're looking for n factorial. What this approximation here, or this this analytic continuation of the factorial lets us do is it lets us calculate an approximation for factorials that aren't integers. So any anything that's on the real line and also for complex numbers as well. 
and it can get very interesting. But we'll we'll just look at examples that are fractions, so real numbers at this point. So what I want to do first is I am going to create our first function, and I'm going to call it analytic fact. And it takes only one input parameter, n. Okay. Then I'm going to go down two lines, and then I'm going to create a function called integrand. And this is what we're going to integrate over. So x, and it takes in n. And I'm going to write out this formula here. So x raised to the n multiplied by e raised to the negative x. And you'll notice that we'll have this next indent here. So you want to make sure you don't mess with that either. So return x raised to the n multiplied by e. And I imported e right at the top raised to the negative x. Great. Finally, we want to return this. And the way that we'll, what we'll do is we'll use the quad function from scipy. And what the quad function does is it solves an integral equation iteratively rather than analytically. So I'll call quad integrand. Then this is going from the lower bound is zero and then it, the upper bound is infinity. So zero, I'm going to call numpy and p dot inf. And then the arguments. And I'm just going to pass in n. And it'll return, so what quad will do is it will return the the result and then it will also return the the error the estimated error of the result but we just want to get the result itself so let's run this and let's check this out so let's first run a regular factorial for five and we'll compare our result so the factorial five is 120 for our analytic factorial let's try five 120 and then there's a rounding error maybe over a dozen places out just for a sanity check let's go to seven seven okay great so let's try to put in a fraction into our factorial function for math we get an error, so it can't handle fractions. Let's put it into ours. And we were able to get the factorial for one half. And again, it, you want to check that this is indeed correct. So here I have Wolfram Alpha, and this is the what they were they came up with for the factorial of one half and it looks like it's the same point eight eight six two two point eight eight six two two great the great thing about user defined functions is that they can get past the limitations sometimes of packages that we may be used to working with in our case the factorial functions in math and numpy as well can only hand handle integers, whereas our function can handle negative numbers and fractions. Same thing for the square root function. For the math package and NumPy as well, it can only handle integers, whereas our square root function can take in negative numbers and give us complex numbers. Great. The final thing that I will show everyone is that functions can be called within other objects. In this case, I'll create a list and I'll call this square root list and I'll create it using list comprehension. And I have my list initiated with brackets and I'm going to call the square root function 
and I'm taking the square root of numbers in a range from 0 to 10. Then I'll just return it so we can take a look. And this can be very helpful when we're doing things like data transformation and we need to transform the data in order for it to better fit our model. And this also shows the flexibility of functions and how powerful they are. Thanks everybody for watching. I hope that this was helpful. I included a references section for things that I found very helpful when I was putting together this tutorial. This textbook is free if you want to check it out. Highly encourage everybody to check out python.org on their section for built-in functions. This video here does a great job breaking down first class objects in Python and it's relatively short. Finally, if you like the video, feel free to subscribe, like the video. You can connect with me on LinkedIn and Twitter and I will put the Jupyter Notebook for this tutorial up on GitHub. Thanks everyone for watching and happy coding.